Hello guys, and today I'm going to show you a magic trick. So, first off, I have only a function playing in these commands, and only a function playing in this command. Now, I'm going to take a random block. Now, I'm going to close my eyes. You're just going to have to trust me on this one. Uh, and I'm going to click a block. Uh, spin around, spin around, spin around, click. Okay. Uh... And I got, <laughs> all right, let me do that one more time. I'll do it on uh, this page. All right. Okay, so I got stairs. So I'm going to put these down um, in whatever way. Let's just pretend you're doing it. And I put it in a very weird way. All right, so now I'm going to click this button. And now I'm going to click this button, and it's going to teleport over here. Ready? Three, two, one. There you go. That's the magic trick. <laughs> if you're wondering that's not magic, it is uh, hard work pain and effort but uh, essentially if I do slash function CW serializer read there's only two functions in this entire data pack okay if I do read it's going to give me a score value under block on BSC and that value is going to correspond to what digit that block is so it should work if I stand in a chest there you go 2033 is the ID for the chest and it is exactly the same ID that the game uses when it sends information on a server so that is also very nice and it includes properties as well uh, so what can you do with this well you can make uh, systems that copy blocks non uh, block updating so you can like instead of having to use a designated area to clone a block to and then clone it somewhere else uh, you can just copy it into imagination and uh, play it using the write command. So if I do write, it will put the chest exactly how it was over there. Granted, the chest is the most command intensive one. It takes 128 commands. Um, that's the worst it'll get. Um, but in terms of uh, other ones, so for example, like air, it's the least. So 26 is the least it will get and 128 is the worst that we'll get. Another cool feature about this system is I made it uh, uniform. The read and write is uniform. So if it takes 29 commands to read, how many commands will it take to write? 29. So I made sure to make the uh, system so that when as many commands as it takes to go through one, it'll take the exact same to go through the other. And that actually took quite a bit of effort, um, but it does turn out very nice and uniform which is good. I could have reduced the command count, of course, but that would have required even more block tags, uh, and it would have taken a lot of work. I'll explain how I did it right after this, but I just wanted to show you guys that data pack. To use it, go to the link in the description, go to your data packs folder, go to uh, drag and drop the zip file in here, and you're good to go. It's going to be um, it doesn't say the word unzip me from now on. If I give you a data pack and it says unzip me, that means unzip it. If it doesn't say it, then don't unzip it. But yeah, don't unzip it. Just throw it in here because I don't intend you to just strip it and move it around because it has so many things in it that, well, it really doesn't, but it does. But it has a lot of crap in it, so I don't expect you to just easily uh, port it to somewhere else. You have to have it on its own. But uh, other than that, that's basically it. So I can... Just go to any of these blocks and copy and paste them using only scoreboards, which can be really useful for a lot of stuff. It also doesn't create block updates because it's a set block. I don't think it creates block updates, um, but you could do some testing with that on your own. So if that's all you cared about, then uh, good luck, have fun. Um, but anyway, so to, now I'm going to go into how I did it because obviously... Um, guess how many, what the biggest number is. Let's go ahead and take out one of the newest blocks we just take out a honeycomb block and let's go into here and let's place it on here and let's click this and 11,336. So I don't think I typed 11,336 slash set block commands. Clearly not. So I used the help of MATLAB, which everybody who uses uh, Python is going to cringe right now, but I used the MATLAB. Yes. Anyways, um, I won't go over exactly how all the code works, but one of the essential components was this blocks.json which was given to me by amber on the uh, mcc discord and basically blocks.json is a file that i believe if i'm getting this right the server if you make a server it needs to send information and when it sends information it sends this and we intercept it and we can read it and what it says is it's a json file that gives you all the ids of every block so it says air is zero 
stone is one. But even more importantly, for a grass block, if it is snowy and it is snowy, true, then the ID is eight. If it is snowy false, then the ID is nine. So we have a thing that we can look at. It's very messy, but we can look at it. And to read this file, it takes quite a bit. So I started by making the block groups. Uh, actually, no, I started by creating a, a decode, an encoder. So this is basically just find, reading all the values. So it grabs the JSON file. The JSON file, when it's grabbed into MATLAB, turns into a structure, which is actually really easy to read. This is what the structure looks like. We have 680 blocks in the game, so the structure has 680 fields. And inside, for example, grass block, it breaks into a branch of states. And then inside states, we have two options. The first option has ID of eight with a set of properties. The second option has ID of nine with a set of properties. And we also have, uh, but for example, for a normal one, it just says one. So there's only one state and the state has an ID. So this is actually a really good uh, structure for it to have when I throw it in, because that means I can just reference things using dots, just like you would in game or something. Um, so all I have to do is I grab the info of the I've grabbed the info of the first element. So I just parse through every single I go through every single element down the list, all 680 blocks. I grab the first uh, whatever element I'm on. I grab that I part and then I look at it. Does it have more than one state? Uh, and then for each state that exists, it has a separate command that gets played. So for all of the states inside the block, it has a command. For if the states is only one, so if there's not multiple, then you just play it like this. Uh, basically, you can create the execute command, but without any property checking. But if there's multiple states, then you have to build it with property checking. And to check the properties, you have to have an extra for loop that loops through all the property options and adds them together. This is kind of important, or well, not just kind of important, this is really important because uh, basically properties can have multiple, so you can have powered equals true and facing equals east, right? So this little inner loop handles that, so it grabs each sub property. And then this loop here handles all of the options that it could be, uh, and this one here handles every block. So that's how the encoder works, uh, and then I won't save it. So the encoder creates that code, but we have to figure out where to put it. So we have this one called function tree, and this basically does the exact same thing the encoder does, uh, but two times, and it does it inside levels, so it builds function files. And essentially, we, each function file is going to play, it's going to have one of the scoreboard set commands for one block, and it's going to have another for the other block. So for example, if you have grass block and you have stone, they're going to be paired together because they're right next to each other, or well, I think andesite is right next to each other. Those two are going to be in the same file, and so all of their sub properties are in the same file, which is why some blocks take more commands than others to build. Um, but after doing that, it is able to do that, and then it goes up a level. So then the next level in the tree is uh, it starts using block tags, and block tags have these groups. So to create the block groups, I basically use the similar system where I group to the first and second block. So I group grass block with andesite, and that's one tag. And then I group every block by two, and then I group every tag by two, and it just builds its way up. So I'll give you a little visualization of basically what I did. So, because it can be kind of confusing, but it's basically forming a binary tree. So it says, this block is next to this block in the order, so they're gonna be together. Uh, and then it says this block is next to this block in the order, so they're gonna be together. And then we're going to call them one item. We're gonna make a block tag group for them. This basically groups the blocks together under one tag. Then I say these two are next to each other, so they're going to be grouped under one tag. Okay, so then as we're checking, we basically just say, are they in this group? So we go to here, are they in this group or are they in this group? If they're in this group, then we go down. Is it this block or is it this block? If it's this block, then we set the score. And I basically do that, but it's like way bigger. It's seven uh, trees deep and it creates actually surprisingly about 670 block tags. Uh, you can see right here, tags, blocks. There's about 670 block tags here. Um, and the lowest block tag has 340, which makes sense because you're having 680 every time. 
And then there's a few exceptions where I can't do half because it's uneven. And then after I create those block tabs, I run the function that uses those tags to create the functions, which it creates the same amount of function files. Uh, you can see, say, this one, it just has a bunch of uh, possibilities for blocks between two types of blocks, and that's granite wall and stone brick wall. Uh, but then, for example, at level three, it's just checking if it's ver in the next tag below it or the other tag below it, just like we showed in the example. So that's the essentially how it all works. It uses a binary tree so that it uses the least commands. Um, and then for writing it, you just have a decoder and it basically does the opposite. It's a little bit trickier because you have to get the set block right. But uh, once you do that, it basically just the opposite. It uses scoreboard values to create the set block. Building the tree was actually a lot more complicated because I had to figure out what the previous value was and then move it up to become the bounds of the new value. Uh, I basically have to see, let me show you what it turns out to be. So at level seven, we have just, is it this exact number? Then do this exact thing. But for example, at level four, we have, is it between zero and seven or is it between eight and 17? Getting these values was actually really hard. It would have been a lot easier if I just did a straight up binary tree, which would have probably taken a little less commands, but I wanted to be consistent with my uh, read function. And uh, basically it just, to get those values that it's supposed to be, it's kind of difficult. You have to pass the previous value to the new level, and then you also have to delete all the odd and all the even values. But once I figured that out, it was uh, it just generated it, and boom, it's done. So that's pretty much the whole data pack. Uh, took me more time to generate it than to, uh, no, not really any Minecraft code writing. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.